Before 1980, we have only a, a government television. So we didn't have private uh, broadcaster. There were very strong rules about how to do commercials. They didn't want to have free advertising. Filmmaster Group is a multimedia group that was started uh, in the 1980. We started as an pro uh, advertising producer and we start producing commercial. And what we did first of all, we tried to copy the Anglo-Saxon system and we tried to be more close to the English and American system of producing commercial than to the old Italian style. The rules uh, used to say that before to give a small advertising messages, you should enjoy the public for, with a little show. So we used to do one minute and 20 seconds of show, maybe having someone telling a funny story or uh, telling, showing uh, uh, a testimonial. could have 10 seconds only of presentation of the product. That uh, was a very difficult system and the system was called Carosello. Fernet Branca carattere dominante. The last uh, job that we did it was for an um, in English company and it was the the shot of the big concert um, of Paul McCartney here in Rome. We organized the final um, show of the Winter uh, Olympic Games in Salt Lake City. The six minute of uh, the presentation of the next Italian uh, Olympics Games in 2006 in Torino. Our job uh, in Italy is very different about the uh, international uh, a market of ad advertising the world. Usually in, uh, in other countries, that means in England, in America, in Canada, <laughs> usually the agency call you and ask uh, straight for a director that usually you have. Here it's completely different, the system. That means that uh, here the agency call you and try to understand which director you can propose and try and ask you uh, which uh, best project you can do with this director. It's different the sense of humor, of course. We are more warm and it's, it's completely different. We are more, we use my, our hands. <laughs> We work a lot with uh, uh, UK directors because uh, if you mix, uh, you, can, uh, you can get a very nice job mm -hmm. so if you mix the sense of humor. Mm -hmm. 
18 years. <laughs> what is <a> enough? <laughs> Are you tired of it? <laughs> no, I'm not tired, but it's getting worse in the last two or three years. Right. It's getting uh, more difficult because the budget, of, of, of course, in all the world, there, are, there is a crisis, you know, uh, also in advertising. So the budget uh, has been uh, reduced, reduced a lot. It's very easy to shoot here in Italy. Most of the big cities like Roma, Milano, Torino, Venezia have their film commission, their film found and um, everything goes very quickly and very, very, very easy now, except if you want to go and shoot in the Colosseum. It's a spot that we've uh, had an incredible amount of success with um, called Good Dog and uh, touch wood if everything goes well it will air um, I know it will definitely air the question is what position it's going to be and how well it's going to do um, and it'll probably be ranked on the USA Today rating this Sunday and um, touch wood that it does well so we're sort of banking on a winner on this one hey Nice dog. Yeah, this is Piper, your bred border collie. Watch this. Piper, fetch. <laughs> Good boy, Piper, you're such a smart dog. So, uh, what can your dog do? Fergus, Bud Light. <laughs> Head dog. Fresh, smooth, real Bud Light. <laughs> It's all here. I remember the first time I saw you. You were standing in the kitchen naked, baby. We've got 18 uh, hormone-driven adolescents who live and breathe all of the elements that are present in other reality shows, the drama and the backbiting and the gossiping and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> We're shooting uh, a 13 half hour documentary series called Rock Camp and it's about a group of 18 young musicians who've come from all across the country in order to participate in a kind of rock and roll boot camp here in Halifax. One, two, three, four! We get to meet people every day and we get awesome prizes and we get to do what we love to do. for the best available combination of musicality, creativity, uh, stage presence, songwriting ability, um, all of those things, things that, things that make a rock star, really. <laughs> she jumped. Good morning, campers. <laughs> you didn't stay up trashing the dorm rooms all night or anything? <laughs> I think rock camp is like a dream come true because it's like everyone, every musician like, wants to like, play music every day. We get to do this every day and jam with bands and create our own style and original music and everything you want to be is right here. We're going to have a cheesy love song challenge today. So everyone has to come up with a cheesy love song. Um, our special guest of the day is going to be Sean Vareau from Wide Mouth Mason. This is inspiring for me. Like I'm carrying a journal around and writing because you guys, you know, music making is contagious. Playing in a band is a, a really great thing. I've been wanting to do that for a long time and uh, it's a really great experience. 
just all of this coming to a new place, meeting new people. I remember the first time I saw you. You were standing in the kitchen naked, baby. You were three years old. What we're really interested in are the experiences of the campers, their own stories, their creative process, their creative struggle. So whereas a lot of other reality TV shows tend to be focused around prizes and focused around contests, this is definitely focused around the musical ability and the musical desires of the participants. <laughs> It's been amazing, actually. It's really not what I expected. I don't really know what I expected. <laughs> it's really involved with the nitty gritty business of being in a band, of writing songs, of learning how to jam in different styles of collaborating with other people. In a way, it's kind of an anti-reality show that way because it's very much about the hard work and the process and less so about the instant fame and fortune. And you're trying to uh, capture the day by going from room to room, by seeing how the songs are progressing, by seeing the, the chemistry between the players. <laughs> When they first walked in the door, it was kind of a, uh, a media assault on them you know, for uh, teenagers to be thrown into a, a fishbowl like this. And there's always camera on, there's always two cameras on, sometimes there's four cameras on, and then there's the boom. And that can be really intimidating. But we, um, as we kept shooting, we learned to give them space and let them come to us a bit. The fact that we've become friends with the cameramen and the, and the boom mic guys and stuff like that makes it totally way easier to just let them film us. First couple of days are really weird. I'm Robin Black. I'm Jose from By Divine Right. Hey, this is Jeremy, and I play with Default. Hey, I'm Bruce from My Mother Earth. Hi, I'm Darren, I'm from Goldfinger. Hey, I'm Sean from Wide Mouth Mason. Hi, I'm Chico from Not By Choice. I'm Bryn from Live On Release. Do so you get 18 kids and you fire them into this pressure cooker, and, uh, you know, sure enough, they don't, they don't fail to disappoint. I mean, there's backstabbing and gossiping. Oh, yeah, and, and the show doesn't end when they leave uh, this building at 7 o'clock at night. They go back to their dorms, and we've given all the kids mini-DVD cameras. And off they go, and they shoot their own pranks and antics after hours. They come back the next day, and we see this stuff, and go, oh, I can't believe they're doing this. <laughs> back at the dorm at the bloody gong show. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Once I think they began to understand, it's really that simple. They, they relaxed a lot more in front of our cameras. I mainly did it to get on TV, and that seems to be working. And uh, also, I mean, just playing music. In Edmonton, it's kind of hard to get uh, gigs, I find, so maybe I can use this as a bit of a boost to get some more gigs and make it a bit easier. And women. It's tracking um, the stories and the characters and, and trying to weave them together and trying to represent all these different angles and all these different players and just trying to re represent their experience here as best as we can. And there is a load of tape. Devin Young. <laughs> I'm in it for a great time and to learn a lot, and I've been learning so much. Well, it's been really insane. Uh, it's just a lot of, uh, the main thing that's hard for me is just the getting up at seven every day. The hardest thing is uh, the fact that you're with these people 24-7. You're, you're, not only are we just working with them in the day, but we go back home, and all the conflicts and everything that happens here goes home with us. So I'm glad I have a single dorm room. I feel like a lot of people around me are being really competitive, but I would want to try and keep out of that and just go, go along and go for the ride and not try and beat anyone at anything. I just want it for the experience and for the music. Fireless ride doll, you're still playing and I think good doll. <laughs> All 
our band doesn't have the best chemistry, but I think we do have the best music, and it's been it's been it's been a journey, <laughs> I guess you could say. I just take these kids and like help them come together. A lot of personality conflicts, and they're not used. Some of them aren't used to being in bands, so they just got to work things out, write some songs, and hopefully, you know, learn what it's all about. It's been amazing. It's an incredible experience. Just meeting rock stars, learning what it's really like to be a musician, recording and, and doing gigs. It's really hard too. I've already learned like tons, like just about songwriting and stuff like that, so that's good. And um, you know, the EMI single and the $5,000 would be great, you know, that'd, that'd be swell. They've failed at everything they've done. People don't like being around them because they're so incorrigible, you know. In, in our estimation, you know, and that's the group that I thought, you know, they really need something. Homeless people don't have a home, neither does a parade. Parades wander in the streets. Homeless people are your neighbors. Whether you like it or not, they are here. This is a tough crowd that we work with. They look so innocent sitting here. <laughs> I got news. I used to dance. I used to do escort. I think it's a good place for people to, to like start, homeless people to start back getting into the world and stuff. It's a fun place to be. The work isn't always easy but it's a place that you like to come back to every day. I think when anybody creates anything, I think it's a, we produce something that's a part of us. And I think that if you feel good about that process and internalize it, then you're going to become um, more confident. And I've watched that confidence grow. This is my friend, her name's Peaches. That's her nickname. And she wrote this poem. It's called Left Alone. And that's about her mother leaving her alone as a child. And I thought about putting a hand under her because she always wanted somebody to be, to be there for her. And she has three children that are not with her, but she gets to see them and she wants to get her GED and she wants to be a, a veterinarian, so I put the, the animals behind the fence. This is a woman named Princess on the street, and her name, and see, that's why she's got the crown here, and she has her, uh, her life split in half here, and she hates brown, and this is her favorite color, and here we have some simulated tears of crack and she was, was using crack a lot and still does off and on. And her pimp used to beat her with a coat hanger. And so that's why we have that stuck into her cheek. But out of that union came four children. And, um, and so that's the happier side of her life. This is for life and death on Christmas. His mother died on Christmas and he was born on Christmas. He's a Muslim, that's where the hat was. He likes playing basketball. He's also a vice lord and still actively in a gang. At 17, he was in a, um, a gas station holdup and he killed a guy and did five years. the 
common theme that went through all of these masks was the disconnection from family and abuse, and all of them had that theme. When she first came to us, she hardly said anything. And I literally pulled her out from underneath the bridge. So I went under there and I said, Marilyn, you're coming with me. And she said, where? And I said, just come. And so I said, you're going to work for me. And she said, no, I can't. And then she would come and she would go. And then pretty soon I saw her really getting into it and really interested. And she became a fantastic mask maker. of times um, you know being on the streets people look down at them they don't feel like they have worth and they get that from here if I find that they're taking their paycheck and going out and getting drunk and getting a paycheck and going out and getting drunk well that's not what we're about you know so you need to do something I'm not saying you have to be sober what I say is you have to do something <laughs> I wouldn't have a job I probably wouldn't be where I am today as far as I'd probably still be on the streets, not have an apartment, not really be doing anything at all. Part of our mission is to alter public's image of people who are homeless. And so real often as social service people, we beat people over the head with it and make them feel guilty. And they don't need to feel guilty, for God's sake. That doesn't do anybody any good. They just and don't feel sorry. Just see what, you know, next time you see a homeless person, you might think differently about them. The Internet Archive is now working with the uh, Million Books Project, which is a joint project with the Internet Archive. Carnegie Mellon, India and China, to uh, digitize a million books and make those publicly available, starting with out of copyright works. Oh. So not so digitize the public domain, put it online so you can download and print and bind a book. We developed a bookmobile that allows you to print and bind books for a dollar. Turns out it only costs a dollar for the binding, the, the cover, the pages, the ink toner, so you can make public domain books out in the field. Just got back from Uganda where we installed one of these. It's completely great. Um, so anyway, the idea is to have books. If you actually go to a library or in Uganda, if you walk for a day, you can go and have access to the world's knowledge. Right? That's the dream of libraries and this technology is helping us build it. <laughs>